Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives. Well, it certainly doesn't take much to get me into an Iron Maiden mood or on an Iron Maiden kick. My last video was an update, and of course, we started off that video with the sad news of the passing of Paul Diano. May he rest in peace. Um, you know, and it got me listening to those first two Iron Maiden albums at least three or four times over. And I thought, and you know, I did mention in the video that my previous Iron Maiden uh, ranking video was a little outdated, six years old already, did not include Senjutsu. And you know what, to be honest with you, listening to me six years ago, pretty rough. So I thought, let's, you know what, let's continue and go through all 17 of these studio albums, see if anything's changed see where Senjutsu fits in. And I just, I don't know, I've been kind of in an Iron Maiden mood lately. Well, obviously, you know, preparing for this video, but I just feel like something's brewing. If maybe another live album, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Future Past live album in the first quarter of 2025 and hoping for that 18th studio album, maybe by the end of the year or early 2026 would be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of love for these guys. <clears throat> Discovered Iron Maiden way back in, uh, I guess technically 1983. Uh, Peace of Mind was already out. So my first new album was Power Slave. So let's see where that lands in the ranking. But as as the as per usual with my ranking videos, you know, I'll tell the tell you the year the album came out, stuff like that. I know you don't need a, a lot of info if you're watching an Iron Maiden video, but I'll throw a few things in here. I'm going to go today. I, I have, this is, by the way, the most collectible stuff in my full collection is all Iron Maiden stuff. I mean, CDs, uh, vinyl, cassettes, you know, mugs with, with, with beer in it and figurines, uh, beer bottles, whatever. The most stuff for sure, by far. I think maybe Judas Priest would come second, but I mean, it's a way, it's a distant second, put it that way. So today I'm going to show you, I'm going to just hold up some CDs today. And these are the newer uh, Digi Packs, just for, you know, there'll be no glare, things like that. But I, you know what, I do have originals of all these and, and quite a few cassettes left from back, my original cassettes. I'll try to hold up a couple of those, but. All right, let's get moving. We will start off with my number 17. You know what? I wanted to love this album more. I actually felt like I wanted to put it a little higher than I did, but you know what? Still coming in at number 17. Virtual 11, 11th overall studio album, 1998. Second and last to feature Blaze Bailey. You already know all this info. Uh, cover art by Melvin Grant. This actually is one of my least favorite Iron Maiden covers. Um, and just a, a little tidbit of info. This is the first time they use the alternate logo where the, uh, you know, the letters are cut off. It's all uh, level across here. So they use this logo um, for, I think, five studio albums. And then the regular logo returned on Book of Souls. But so coming in at number 17, is there some good tracks on here? Yes, there's one of my all-time favorite Iron Maiden tracks on here, The Klansman. You know what? I do like The Angel and The Gambler, but I would shave off four minutes of it would make it even a just a better song. All that repetition stuff. Uh, there's another song on here too. Um, is it? Oh, When Two Worlds Collide. Very repetitious with that title too. Uh, another standout on here would be Future Real, the leadoff track. <clears throat> this one, and it only clocks in at 53 minutes. That's not bad. A, a lot shorter than um, the other Blaze ba Bailey album, which we'll, we'll get to shortly. But there is my number 17, Virtual 11. Coming in at number 16. And I should tell, I should give you some info there. Iron Maiden really, to me, and, and I'm serious, they, they don't have a bad album. In a way, they have some missteps, maybe a little bit of boredom in there. Um, and when I hold up the next album, there's actually some tracks that just kind of blend together. And the big factor, too, is all of you guys, we're, we all came into this at the timing, nostalgia. Those all play a huge factor in where you came in. I came in in 1983 with Peace of Mind. You might have came in in 
you know, 2015 with Book of Souls, or you might have came in on in 1995 with the X Factor. That's all factors of, of you know, the ranking. So, but I always find it interesting to see where people place uh, these albums. But let's continue coming in at number 16, 15th overall studio album, The Final Frontier. That is another artwork by that Melvin Grant, who, to be honest with you, took over um, on uh, Fear of the Dark. And uh, we'll get to that cover in a bit. But this one is the, you know, again, not one of my favorites, but I love the colors. I love the green, the blue. Awesome. The Maiden logo looks great. Still that alternate logo. But this Eddie is uh, not that great. But uh, now for tracks on here. If you can eliminate Satellite 15, the first four minutes and 30 seconds that in your life that you're never getting back and go right into the final frontier, that's a it's a great track. Uh, I also love El Dorado. And then I would put this song on one of my favorite Iron Maiden uh, songs of all time, whether at a top 40 or 50. And that is the track When the Wild Wind Blows. <clears throat> I know it's 10 minutes long. But it's a, definitely a great track. So there is number 16. Coming in number 15. And I think, would this be the... Well, when it came out, it was the, definitely the longest album to date. And that is Book of Souls. 16th overall studio album from 2015. There is the track listing. Now, this is where we shift over to a different artist. This is Mark Wilkinson. Mark Wilkinson also did Senjutsu. He's done... Uh, the last maybe two or three Judas Priest album covers, but uh, you know what? I know this one's simple, but I really like the Eddie on here. I like the black and the return of the traditional logo where the R, N, M, and N are all extended and not leveled off. But So tracks on this album, why does this fall in number 15? Uh, you know what? I just, overall... I mean, there's always good tracks to pick out on an Iron Maiden album for sure. Uh, if if Eternity Should Fail, good track. Speed of Light, don't mind that at all. But I, I just find this one, I don't know. It just, I just don't go back to it that often. And, and that's probably why it's sitting at number 15. Uh, Tears of a Clown, I, I actually don't mind that song. That's, uh, you know, written about uh, Robin Williams, uh, you know, who tragically passed away. Uh, prior to, well, definitely probably 2013-ish or something. I, I actually forget when he passed away, but I, I do like that track. And uh, the title track, Book of Souls, you know, they always do enough to keep me interested for sure. And I mean, it's Iron Maiden, but uh, Empire of the Clouds, that's, uh, I think it's 20 minutes. That one kind of loses me a bit, but there's number 15, Book of Souls. Let's get hydrated. It stays nice and frosty in that Trooper mug. <clears throat> Coming in at number 14, 10th overall studio album, 1995's The X Factor. Uh, of course, you know, first with Blaze Bailey. And at the time, 71-minute album, so that's the longest to date. And I think part of that is why I have it where it is. Because my favorite tracks on here are a little bit bunched up, actually front loaded you could say <clears throat> sign of the cross lord of the flies and man on the edge what a great way to start an album absolutely love it then you get into these other tracks that have very slow plotty beginnings so it takes time for things to get going so i don't know if you've took this one and just kind of trimmed off the fat which a lot of people do say about iron maiden albums but i you know i don't I don't mind some of these other longer albums, but this one definitely could have been, even a knockoff 10 minutes, you would have been great. And that's those long uh, intros, things like that. What else can I mention on here that I enjoy? Uh, Judgment of Heaven, that's a great song too. Fortunes of War, love the start to that very, excuse me, kind of a, a chuggy, chuggy kind of, uh, I don't even know how to describe that riff, but pretty good song for sure. But there is my number 14, The X Factor. And actually, back in the day when I first bought that, I'll show you my original CD, and I'll show you how it was shown on the shelf and wrapped in, here in Canada, where I live. So I guess that cover was too graphic, because this is 
this is what there we go that's uh that's how they showed the uh the cover and uh even in the booklet actually if you open up this booklet it is right side up when you open this side so now the the natural cover if you open up this booklet on the original cd everything's upside down because this i guess this is kind of the censored cover we could say it but yeah i remember when i picked that one up back in 19 what was that 1995 all right moving along number 13 and this is where senjutsu fits in for now and why i say that is because i think this one still has room to grow for me but i enjoy this album I think when it first came out, let's hold it up anyways. <clears throat> so here's uh, 82 minutes of Iron Maiden 17th studio album, of course, released in 2021. When it first came out, I thought, you know, this, oh, it's too long. These songs are too long, all this stuff. And I said that after I heard the whole album because writing, uh, writing on the wall, the first, the writing on the wall, the first song released, I absolutely love it. I thought this is really different for Iron Maiden to do. Uh, oh, and this alternate artwork, love this too. So this is definitely, you know, what I was telling you, Mark Wilkinson artwork. Love the logo, all this stuff. But I thought, you know what? This thing's too long, but it just, I, I probably didn't give it a proper chance in the beginning. And then I just started listening to it, you know, at least once a month. And I still actually do now. Really growing on me tracks i uh the title track love it it's awesome and i already mentioned the writing on the wall lost in a lost world so that yeah i, I enjoy that one for sure too death of the celts which kind of reminds me of um of uh now i'm losing my train of thought it actually reminds me of the clansman in a way you know whether it be thematic or whatever but definitely that i you know i love when these songs start off with that Kind of uh, uh, Steve's bass with a you know a, a, a slower or an acoustic type of guitar starting off, but that's a great track too. Death of the Celts. Uh, another couple of my favorites on here is uh, the Time Machine and Hell on Earth. But yeah, room to grow. I think we'll see. We'll wait till the next Iron Maiden album comes out, and we'll update our ranking again, and maybe we'll see Senjutsu move up the ladder. I don't know. All right, coming in at number 12, ninth overall studio album, and uh, last to feature Bruce Dickinson with Till 2000. You know all this stuff, but Fear of the Dark. Uh, and this is what I was talking about earlier, the new artist. This is Melvin, Melvin Grant. And when I first thought, you know, when I first saw this, I something was off. I was just like, you know, this covers, you know, it's it's okay, but it's not you know, and then you find out it's not Derek Riggs, which uh, I don't know. I just love Derek Riggs' his art, his artwork for Iron Maiden. I thought, you know, it was a mistake not to have him all these years. But uh, so, yeah, at this point, this would be the second to feature Yannick on guitars who took over for uh, Adrian Smith. But you know all that, too. And you know what? I was thinking Yannick has now been on 10 studio albums, almost as many as uh, Adrian. Adrian's been on 12, but anyways, back to my number 12, Fear of the Dark. This has some awesome tracks. So I'd say half of it, half of it is really good. And then half is just, you know, so-so, but I still enjoy it. Be Quick or Be Dead. Great lead off track, speedy, fast, great vocals. Uh, I mean, you, you know, all these guys, you know what they can do. You know, the galloping bass, you know, the air raid siren vocals, the, the different vocals. So like I said, if you're watching an Iron Maiden video, you're just kind of seeing where I'm I'm putting mine. Um, Afraid to Shoot Afraid to Shoot Strangers. I've always loved that song. Um, Childhood Childhood's End. And you know what? Believe it or not, I have no problem with Weekend Warrior. It's kind of a <clears throat> you know a laid back uh, song for Iron Maiden. And then Fear of the Dark, wrapping up this album, which is still a a live staple to this day for you know most of their tours and stuff so there's my number 12 fear of the dark coming in at number 11 <clears throat> this one actually i think it might have moved up a bit probably one spot or so 
but still the shittiest Iron Maiden cover you could ever come up with. So you know what my number 11 is. 13th studio album from 2003. And like I said, this is just not good whatsoever. This is one of the worst Eddie's uh, they've done. <clears throat> Back cover band shot. So yeah, 68 minutes. And this one doesn't really lose me. It has a lot of great tracks. And there's even a couple that almost... Uh, like New Frontier, it reminds me of, uh, you know, even something off Number of the Beast in a way. Um, what else do I love on here? No More Lies, Gates of Tomorrow, uh, Passchendaele, that that great track, great uh, lyrics on that. Laying Here in a Blood-Filled Trench, you know, that awesome track. Journeyman, you know, almost like basically almost full of acoustic. You know, Aaron Maiden hasn't done a track like journeyman you know until this point in their career which is great face in the sand i mean there's a lot of good stuff on here i think it's you know still 68 minutes but that's okay i think it's all well used the time is well used so there's my number 11 coming in at number 10 and this one you know i see lower on lower on some rankings and then mid I, this one's kind of all over the place but this is uh, my number 10, eighth overall studio album, is No Prayer for the Dying. I actually I have no problem with this album. I bought it brand new back in 1990. I got to see them live in 91, which I'll talk about here in a second. But yeah, this one's got some great tracks. Of course, first uh, to feed uh, Yannick taking over for Adrian, you know, all that stuff too. But I mean, Tail Gunner is awesome. That's a great track, Holy Smoke. Um, the, actually, when I saw them, which I still have the little flyer, this is Iron Maiden, No Prayer on the Road, saw them on March 7th, 1991, Anthrax opening. Um, yeah, they played, that night they played 17 tracks and five of them were from this album. And uh, that was Tail Gunner, Holy Smoke, No Prayer for the Dying, Public Enema Number One, and Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. Um, I mean, even the other tracks are good. The Assassin, Run Silent, Run Deep, love that track. Great riff in there too. Uh, of course, great bass throughout. And, I don't know. And Bruce sounds really good on here to me. The only thing that kind of you know got me is this was the first time that I got to see Iron Maiden live. And it was really a stripped back show. They had the backdrop, they had the speakers and everything else, but they didn't have the full on, uh, you know, seventh son of a seventh son type of production. Uh, you know, so in, in coming off of that album, this is what we, what we got. And, uh, you know, so for a few years, this, you know, I kind of ignored this album, but it is just even as time goes on now, is growing on me and growing on me. So there is my number, what do we say? My number 10. Coming in at number 9, 14th studio album from 2006, A Matter of Life and Death. I love the black, I love the colors and stuff, but again, this is a shit Eddie. Um, just a, a bad attempt. At least they put something on front of the tank, but you know what? You don't play the cover, so... As far as this album goes, this is one of my favorites of the reunion era. So 2000 till today, for sure. Come, that's why it's coming in at number nine. I think this one has, you know, production wise is, it, it's just uh, stripped back a bit. Uh, I, I love the sound of it. I have no problem with that. Some great tracks on here. Even Different World isn't a bad opener. Not one of their best openers. But then you get into some tracks like uh, These Colors Don't Run, great track, um, The Reincarnation of Benjamin Brieg, and one of my favorites is For the Greater Good of God, which they actually played on um, the Leg Legacy of the Beast Tour. I got to see them in, uh, you know, not in Mexico, but I got to see them in 2019, and they played that track, For the Greater Good of God. Really good um yeah, overall great album coming in at number nine. Coming in at number eight, and this one just edged out a matter of life and death. And I mean, 
you're just splitting hairs here anyways but i was so excited when this happened and the reunion of uh, adrian and bruce coming back to iron maiden so this is my number eight 12th overall studio album of course 2000 and then you got i love the colors on this cover and you got a Derek Riggs, Eddie, you know, everything's good. Well, except that logo. We still don't have the, the regular logo back, but whatever. doesn't matter. Band shot. Tracks on here. There's just, I think, I just love this whole album. I honestly do. Um, the Wicker Man, Ghost of the Navigator. But a couple of my real favorite for sure. Dream, Dream of Mirrors. Love that track. And Out of the Silent Planet. Another great track too, so... There is my number eight. So yeah, you know, if you're keeping track at home and you're looking at looking at your scorecard, we got a pile of 80s stuff coming and that's okay. I absolutely grew up with this stuff. If I was, uh, you know, 36 years old or 26 years old instead of almost 56 years old, maybe that would change. But coming in at number seven, or maybe it would be different. Coming in at number seven, is the first album from 1980 iron maiden iron maiden you know how can you not love that cover look at eddie and uh you know love love what uh, iron maiden does i love these tours now what do we have going now we got uh 25 26 is the run for your lives tour i think they're currently wrapping up the future past tour you know i i love these cycle cycles they're on where they're doing these uh kind of nostalgia type of tours mixed in with newer stuff and then promoting a new album well managed marketing machine for sure but uh back to this you know i just love this album and reinforced this one with myself uh you know again after paul had passed away there i listened to these quite a bit and i'm like yeah these you know in 1980 to me this is it's groundbreaking stuff and and still you know it, it will live on for way past when i'm gone and the band is gone whatever but great tracks on here some remember tomorrow running free always love that track the live version on that uh seven inch single just top notch transylvania strange world uh, charlotte the harlot you know the band title track iron maiden iron maiden still a staple in their live set today oh. excuse me Hey, coming in at number six, and actually, and yeah, in high school, this was an entry point for guys that are about two years older than me, but here's my number six, Number of the Beast, Beast. of course, you know all about this, third studio album, 1982, Bruce Dickinson joins the band, which Bruce has been now on 13, 13 studio albums Bruce has been on, so you know, of course, I love the other vocalists, but I mean, Bruce has always been, you know, the voice of the band in in my mind. But like I said, I love Paul. And the other thing with Iron Maiden, too, is they recognize everybody. They still have reissues for the Paul stuff, the Blaze stuff. They don't try to hide anything, you know, they don't or not recognize an era of the band that should be out there. People do want to listen to it. So Judas Priest, you should listen to me and get that ripper shit out because uh, people do want it. Anyways, back to this, Number of the Beast, what can I say? It's just an awesome album. Well-deserving of sixth spot, fifth spot, fourth spot, doesn't matter. If where if you have it at number one, I fully understand. Invaders, not a bad track at all, and you, you know everything on here. Children of the Dam, Prisoner, Number of the Beast, Run to the Hills, which I... I can I never get sick of Run to the Hills, Hallowed by Hallowed Be Thy Name, Gangland. What else did we miss on here? 22 Acacia Avenue. So there's my number six. Coming in at number five. So this was my first new release. I remember standing kind of in an area in high school where we, where we all gathered and one of our friends got this album. A little earlier, I don't know if he was just visiting a different province, but he brought it to school and we were all shitting our pants at the cover and looking at it. And no, it's not somewhere at time, somewhere in time, but it is Power Slave. We're like, where the hell's Eddie? And there he is, um, obviously. Anyways, you know this cover. So yeah, this was my first new release. 
Um, you know, and, and one of the highlights on here for us is, or surprises was the first time we heard, uh, at least I did, heard a 13 minute and 40 second track in Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. But starting off this album with two of my favorites, Aces High, Two Minutes to Midnight, Great Tracks, um, Flash of the Blade, Power Slave, the title track, always love that. And of course, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. So there is my number five from 1984. So time flies when you're listening to metal, I guess. But uh, coming in at, yes, I did say number five. Coming in at number four, the sixth overall studio album, 1986. Now this album cover, we all know, we dissected this thing to death, didn't we? Um, and you know what? Another thing about with Iron Maiden too, it's an absolute history lesson. I actually learned more from Iron Maiden on history than I did in actual history class or whatever we called it back then. Who the hell knows? But yeah, you know, Alexander the Great, things like all these stories, Mother Russia, things like that. We learned, uh, you know, history from Iron Maiden. So anyways, you know this album. And again, this one, if you, this one's your number one, I totally get it. Love this album. I love the guitar synths. I love everything about it. Uh, you know, stand out. Let's go with my favorite deep track on here. Sea of Madness. I think that's just fantastic. Uh, Stranger in a Strange Land. Definitely not a deep track, but that is still one of my favorite Iron Maiden tracks of all time. And Wasted Years. I, got, I could listen to that one all the time uh, or any time. Heaven Can Wait. Uh, Alexander the Great, I think they just played live for the first time a few years ago, two or three years ago, something like that. But yeah, you know the album, you know the album cover, but there's my number four. Get a quick swig here. Coming in at number three, and I did mention this in my update video, and it's back over there on the wall. And this is my favorite favorite album cover of all time and that is killers my number three coming in at number three second studio album 1981 you know what i love this lineup too with clive on drums and i love the number of the beast album or uh, number of the beast lineup too which is basically the same except that paul's out and bruce is in this is that number of the beast and killers put together right here those, that's my favorite Iron Maiden lineup. Adrian's on this album, you know, Clive, may he rest in peace too. But they're just, I just love this album, top to bottom. And like I said, I listened to this one, yeah, four times for sure. Uh, Wrathchild, Mur Murders in the Rue Morgue. But my favorite track on here is uh, Prodigal Son. I just think that's such a unique song. And just, it just shows that they could write great songs. But again, what an iconic logo. What an iconic, uh, you know, album cover. Always commended Iron Maiden for sticking to, you know, their, that this is as recognizable as Coca-Cola or Ford. Iron Maiden is definitely up there with the, you know, just knowing what that is. So that is my number three coming in at number two. And this is one of those top to bottom albums. And again, I could play this anytime. I still love it like I did back in 1988. Seventh overall studio album, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Full on concept album, which Maiden really didn't have another full on concept album. You know, they have conceptual themes like Book of Souls had, you know, things about mortality and your soul, things like that. But this is a full on story, which you already know. But uh, again, love the colors. Always love this logo with the yellow outlining the purple. Awesome. Just no weak track on here whatsoever. Moonchild is one of my favorite Iron Maiden tracks for sure. Love that as an opener. Uh, Can I Play With Madness? Not it just like Wasted Years. Couldn't get sick of that track either. Still love it to this day. The Prophecy, The Clairvoyant, Only the Good Die Young. Awesome. Martin Birch produced, I think he produced right up until uh, Fear the Dark. Yeah, so he Martin produced, you know, right from the beginning till, I don't know if he did the first album, did he? But anyways, Martin Birch production. So there's my number two. 
leaving only one left. And if you're keeping score at home, you know which it is. But this is the album that I discovered Iron Maiden on. It was already out for a little while, but this is where I latched on in 1983. My favorite Iron Maiden album is Peace of Mind, fourth album, fourth overall studio album. First to feature Nico on drums, you know all that stuff too. What else can I tell you? Um, yeah, the, and the guitar tone on this. Uh, they didn't, never quite matched exactly this again. I just think the guitar tone on here is just something special. Here's my original, actually my original cassette uh, for that, for peace of mind. But yeah, favorite tracks on here. I mean, Revelations is actually my favorite track on here. I, the, the, just the riff for that is just awesome. Where Eagles Dare, Die With Your Boots On, you know, the Trooper legendary track. And I like the final three songs on here, Quest for Fire, Sun and Steel, uh, To Tame a Land, or whatever, some, I think it was called Dune on other versions of this at one point, but just fantastic. And yeah, again, that guitar tone, that combo of Murray and Adrian and Smith, just awesome. And any of the live stuff that they do off here, I think they finally, yeah, actually Revelations is on here too. I They played that live when I saw them. So yeah, just awesome. I was going to show you too. So yeah, there's my number one, peace of mind. And I was going to show you my original number of the beast cassette right there too i picked up uh this one was actually a little disappointing that all they did was a, was a cassette for the 40th anniversary they got a couple of things coming out here in um november for uh power slave and somewhere in time i i kind of like those celebration albums and i will pick them up too i i just like i said it's iron maiden but hope you enjoyed that one and uh throw it down in the comments your favorite iron maiden album you know, whatever it is, you're not wrong. It's just obviously your opinion. Uh, we all share the love for these guys. And I do hope to see them, especially on this Running For Your Lives tour. I hope they come around somewhere close to me in Canada in 25 or 26. I'd love to see that. And those of you that are out watching them on the, you know, the, you know the, these final dates of uh, the Future Past tour, I uh, hope you're having a blast, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, stay heavy.